Hello everyone, this is uh, Jenkins Platform SIG meeting when we are on the 21st of May 2024. Today around the table we have Mark Waite, uh, Kevin Martins, Kenneth Palermo and myself, Bruno Verhelsten. On the agenda today I have a container image update, of course, uh, the, for the LTS, the weeklies. Um, the controller, of course, and for the Jenkins agents, we'll uh, tell a few words about the Docker-based quick start tutorials. Um, something about the work in progress on images, nothing major these days. Adoption Summit, Java 21 support, and then a major subject for Jenkins, the spring project uh, upgrade to 6.x. Welcome, everyone. So, without further ado, let's talk about the container image updates for the Jenkins controller. Last week, we had the new LTS, so the 2.452.1, and there are quite a lot of changes in this LTS. Of course, it's been 12 weeks or so. <laughs> so, um, one thing I noticed was the switch from the Tamarind-based image to the Tamarind JDK video binaries. We already talked about that last time, I think, because, yes, <laughs> that's uh, something interesting for us. Uh, we talked about that because it was already in the weeklies. It has been for two or three weeks, can't remember. So it was there for several reasons, one of them being having um, smaller images with uh, less layers so that we don't use as much the Docker Hub as we used to do with the Tamarind-based image um, beforehand. So we uh, removed quite a few layers, uh, the images build faster, and what else to say, uh, it's supposed to be more efficient, and we should be able, if ever, Maybe I'm stretching things a little bit too too much, but uh, if ever we had a CV somewhere, we wouldn't have to wait until Tamarin supplies their um, list of Docker images uh, before we can release something on our own. We would just have to wait until the binaries are ready. And most of the time they are way faster to supply binaries uh, instead of their Docker images. So that's, yeah, the two major reasons uh, we will be faster and it will take less layers on the Docker Hub. So that's a good thing. Uh, then less important changes, we bumped the Debian Bookworm Linux version of UB8, UB9. Uh, and as usual, we had, a, how, does, um, how is it called, Mark? The Oracle Java update, whatever. Uh, you know, sometimes it happens during a month and then we have, bam, a new version for GDK 11, 17, 21. Yeah, what, what Oracle calls it is the critical patch update. And oh, they yeah. do it once a quarter. So yes, Oracle CPU, critical patch update. And we're delighted that, well, this was actually one of the key reasons that we benefited from all that work to switch from container-based images, from container-based JDK to download the binary and install it ourselves, based JDK. So it, yeah. it was much faster, much smoother, uh, all sorts of benefits. Thank you, Mark. I don't know why I put these ones under. Uh, I don't think these are related. Those okay. are, those are the, the Adoptium API is actually related to the earlier. Yeah, those, those are outer level. That's great. Right where you got them. Yeah. Uh, in fact, yeah, the, all of them are related, but they are not part of the bump plugin. <laughs> I'm not sure. To, to, okay. We'll make another, whatever. How could I call that? Um, Adoption update, whatever. I find maybe better later on. So we bumped the plugin manager to 2.13.0. I think we talked about that uh, last time, Mark, but I just can't remember. That was a long due, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the the enhancement I the enhancement was valuable, and it justified a, an increment in the minor number, like like uh, Tim did. So 2.13.0. I don't remember what the specific was but it was justified it's okay. it's a good good update thank you and now on to the adoption update it goes with the changes we talked about earlier the switch from tamarind base image to tamarind jdk binaries so we made a lot of other changes uh, for example we now check the validity of releases thanks to the adoption api beforehand we were using uh, of course already update cli but we were relying on github releases and tags 
um, how to say that politely, uh, it was not always easy to find the right uh, release name or tag name uh, of the Adoption releases. So now we are using their API and it's easier uh, for us to find the right, the right binaries. Um, then Hervé came and adapted manifest to use only one Docker file per Linux variant by variant we mean uh, Debian, Alpine, um, Red Hat and so on. So because there were lots of different Docker files, one per Linux variant and a JDK version. So that was difficult to maintain. Um, the consequences, one of the consequences is that we had to use now the correct Docker files independent. I think it was you that did that, Mark, right? Uh, because we were not referring, we were referring to the old Docker files that were spread all around the uh, repository. Now we have few, um, uh, less, sorry, Docker files. So we had to correct uh, dependent, I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, then for the Windows JDK release, we rely on the same way of doing with the adoption API, if I'm not mistaken. And then, uh, Hervé added the jail in compression arc to zip six for the Windows JDK 21 image. That was not the case beforehand. And we also now track Java versions for Windows with update CLI. So quite a, a lot of uh, nice improvements. And as we told uh, two weeks ago, that also what could be considered a breaking change, even if that was not supposed to be used beforehand, uh, we removed the deprecated install plugin.sh script from the Linux JDK 11 images. I didn't hear anybody complain. Mark, did you hear anything? No, no. And, and even if they had, I'm afraid we would have told them, it, it, yes, it's a breaking <laughs> change. No, we don't care. You need to adapt. Now on to the weeklies. Uh, so we had the same kind of uh, changes that are now part of the current LTS of the use Docker or uh, correct Docker files in Dependabot, adapt, ad adapt, oh, manifest to unique Docker file, and so on, bookworm bump, which is classical. Now, on to the Jenkins agents. We had three new releases for the SSH agent and three new releases for the Docker agent. This one, I don't master it. I hope some of you know what it's all about. I saw, I, th I think it was from Vincent Solatombe um, at the beginning, yes. But I don't really know what this does. Mark, would you have any insight for that? Yes, so so what we had before was a whole series of, a series of different environment variables that you could set and unset etc to, to pass our options in what vincent said is look let's simplify this let's do lose just a single single thing pass all the options in instead of messing with several different things now i get it <laughs> thank you mark uh, then, of course, we renamed the JDK script and added the CLI manifest. We updated the adoption installed JDK SH script content because what we did for the Docker um, uh, controller images now are used for the agents too. If I'm not mistaken, Mark, I think we have migrated these scripts into another repo and now the agent and the controller use the same script that is somewhere else. Right. Uh, I, I I think that migration is in progress still. Oh, it's not done. Okay. But but yes, that's the intent. Is that what we've realized is these these scripts are useful in multiple locations, and so we we are going to in fact use them in multiple locations. That's cool. Uh, that would be easier to maintain also. Now onto the Docker based quick start tutorial. So we switched to the latest LTS version last week. Uh, not that anybody asked for it, but why not? It's automatic. You just have to click a button and it works. So why not? Uh, we also uh, migrated to the latest agent image. So I think it's a 5.37 something. Um, and it works pretty well. And now I'm still working on the, I'm back working on the main Jenkins installation thanks to Docker tutorial. I was blocked because of a stupid problem. I will tell you uh, more about that. 
uh, and the user named Long Kong on uh, community.jenkins.io um, gave me the solution to to my problem. So thanks a lot, Long Kang. Uh, the thing is, I was trying to um, you know to follow the same path as we do for the other install Jenkins on whatever, which is use a wizard. And then I was trying to connect an SSH agent. And to connect an SSH agent, of course, you have to add a new credentials of type SSH username and password. And the thing is, um, you have to install the SSH agent plugin to do so. Jenkins uh, will let you create that kind of credential, but the SSH agent won't work. Uh, you won't be able to connect your node. You won't see the credentials when you cr try to create a new, a new agent. A new node. That's a problem. And the only workaround, workaround I had was just to restart Jenkins. For whatever reason, after creating the credentials and restarting Jenkins, I was able to see the credentials, even if I did not install the SSH agent plugin. Go figure. But now, uh, in the tutorial, I added install the SSH agent plugin, <laughs> and it works. You don't have to restart Jenkins. Anyhow. But I did things uh, maybe not the best way. I started with the simplest tutorial ever, which is docker compose up minus D default and everything works. You already have an agent working. You have a sample project. Everything, everything works out of the box. But that's not what we want. We'd like to have the same path as the other tutorials, which is work with a wizard. So that's why now I have to I switched the two parts and put the work with the wizard first, which is a little bit uh, more difficult, but that's okay. That's not the end of the world either. It's still kind of easy. It's only one command with Docker Compose and then a few other commands to have, you know, the right credentials and so on, but it's still easy, I would say. Easier than the current tutorial in any case. <laughs> now, done with that. Um, the work in progress in current images, I haven't spotted anything really major. We have for the Docker agent, the uh, uh, factorized JDK in dockerbake.hcl. And for the Docker SSH agent, we have one PR, which is kind of stalled. I'm not so sure this one will be merged uh, one of these days. I don't know if it's um, update CLI or is it update CLI? Yeah, I think so. That is doing something that is not really good for the time being. Uh, it has been approved, but I'm not so sure it's okay. Maybe we have had another one in the meantime. I can't remember, but I don't know. Uh, Mark, uh, do you remember this one? Yeah, I thought that I thought that this was a correct change, but ultimately, I'm still in the I'm still in the camp of saying that I think we should turn off Java 21. Let's see, is this agents before I say that? No, okay, this is fine. So for, I don't yeah. want I don't want EA. I don't want early access for the controller, but for the agent, this seems like a reasonable change. But I'm not so sure this is a, a preview version. I, I can't oh remember. well, that, but, that's a problem. I think no, and I think I it, it, I believe it is a preview version. Oh, it is. And okay, so my even bad. and. If not, since the only place we're using the preview version right now is for ARM 32-bit. You're right. Right? So I think the risk is quite low. Okay. So we may merge it. Yeah. Is, <laughs> is, it, is it passing tests, I guess, is the is the crucial question. Oh. If, if it's passing tests, great. If it's not passing, if the checks are passing. It's not. Right. So then that says it's not ready to merge. That's a good indication. Thank you. Next subject I had was the Adoption Summit. Uh, so it will take place uh, online next September. I think it's around the 10th of September. So I submitted the talk about Jenkins' use of Temerin. And if ever you have another subject regarding Jenkins and Temerin, or Temerin itself, go ahead, uh, submit the talk. I don't think the CFP is closed yet. Now onto the Java 21 support. Mark, what are the news, if any? Yeah, so here the, the on Java 21 support, we've got a, a, a pressing need for me to do more research or to prepare better lists. And it, okay. it's tied to the next one on the list. So, mm -hmm. so we will be transitioning Jenkins weekly from requiring Java 11 to require Java 17 on June 18th. 
So less than a month from now. Uh, no, no, I think it's the 18th, not the 17th. Yeah, sorry, it's uh, 17, 17, my bad. <laughs> yeah, 18, right, good. So, so, so the challenge is I need to go through and be sure I've got a checklist assembled for the the weekly transition for those places where we need to make changes so that we can do those tasks and be ready for them when they when they happen mm. that's yep. that's only one part of this two plus two plus two thing but it's certainly an immediately useful part that needs to be done so no it's not yet done but i've got to do it got it thank you mark and next subject is also <laughs> on you sorry uh, yeah so well the... actually this one thankfully is the vast majority of the work is being done by Basil Crow and Adrien Le Charpentier. You're right. But I can report on it. Please do so. Okay, so the Spring Project has has declared that Spring secure, Spring Framework 5.3 will be end of life August 31, 2024. Uh, spring Security Framework 5.8 will also be end of life August 31, 2024. Uh, because of that end of life, uh, the Jenkins project needs to switch from Spring Security 5.8 to Spring Security 6. And those that effort has started. Special thanks to Basil Crow and to Adrien Le Charpentier for their work on it. Basil's first step is already implemented and released in today's weekly. Or in, it's Tuesday, right? Yes, in today's we weekly. So... File Apache file upload has been upgraded from 1.x to 2.x. Uh, it's still using Jakarta EE8 imports, but that first step is important because it gets us ready for the time when we will switch to Jakarta EE9. So milestone one, that first thing, file upload, is done. The next milestone after that is when we require Java 17 in Jenkins Weekly, June 18th, about a month from now. One week later, or possibly two weeks later, not yet sure which of those, but one to two weeks later, we will switch from using Jetty 10 with EE8 to using Jetty 12 with EE8. That change has to have the Java 17 requirement first, and we want to give a little bit of time between the Java 17 required and the transition to Jetty 12, we'd prefer to not to put those on the same weekly release if we can avoid it. Mm. Got it. So, so then at that point, we're on Java 17, we've got Jetty 12 with EE8, and then we get ready for the next change, which is Java 12 switching to Jakarta imports, so EE9. And that's when we'll also switch to Spring Security 6. Date not yet determined, uh, still still being explored, actively being investigated by Basel and by Adrien Le Charpentier. Well, that's quite a lot of work, but looks like you already have a plan. <laughs> yes, well, thanks to them. This is just me reporting all the great work they're doing. Yeah, but that's fantastic. Uh, Mark, do you think we may remove that alternative? No, well, let's see. Good question. Um, it's it's still it is still a valid condition because if so, this gives us something that looks possible for Jenkins Weekly, but we still oh. won't release Jenkins LTS with Spring Spring Framework Spring Security Six until thirtieth of October, twenty twenty four. So there will be a period where the LTS releases are not will be running an outdated version of Spring Framework or Spring, excuse me, Spring Security. And that outdated version of Spring Security, if there were to be a problem, we might have to do exactly that again, fork there or do that, fork Spring Security, fix it ourselves and use the, the our fork. It would only be for that relatively limited period, but it's still a, it's still a possible event if something happens between August 31 and October 31 and the spring project is not willing to revise their end of life plan we would we would prefer very much if they would just revise their end of life plan if they had to at that point but 
I I understand you don't you don't do that easily or trivially. Got it. I've got a couple of stupid questions if you don't mind. Um, when will the next LTS baseline be chosen? Eleven weeks from now? Uh, oh, let me look it up. That's a good question. I've I regularly put that on various places, and I yeah, don't have I it immediately available. But let me bring it up because I'm sure I can find it. Next LTS baseline selection. So the the next LTS baseline which we choose will be the last baseline that supports Java 11. Oh, I I actually remember it now. Now I'm glad you mentioned it. We will choose that baseline July 3rd. So so the LTS baseline will be chosen now. Okay, now I'm I've got to double check just to be sure. Okay, next LTS baseline is selected. June, 26 June is the last LTS. We will select the LTS baseline for the last LTS. However, we will have to choose not the most re recent weekly release yeah. because it will already require Java 17. That was my uh, question. That is, and that's something that community has accepted. The release officer, Tim Jacom, has approved of that, that we know we're going to Java 17 and that will prevent us from choosing that weekly as the baseline. That will be, okay. Yeah, well, I don't know how to write that to, to be running with. Yeah, so we we'll, we will have to choose the baseline release for the for the next LTS will be something prior to the require Java 17 change. And we've done that before. So it's we've done that kind of technique before and it it hasn't been terribly disruptive to anyone, right? We choose a a good baseline and it works just fine. Okay, uh, I, I just lost my ability to count, but <laughs> uh, so that's for um, uh, a timeline, a time of twelve weeks or so. Twelve weeks later, if we choose another baseline, we will have to choose something that works with JDK seventeen, or we will have to keep the so, same. Yeah, yeah. No, no. The, so, so when on June on twelve weeks from June twenty six. We will choose the LTS baseline that will require Java 17. So, and that's intentional. We knew that. That's already been the plan. And I can give you that exact date to, let's see, just a minute. Let me look it up. That is the, the date is 18 September, 2024. We will choose the LTS baseline. The nice thing about that is by that, by 18 September, we will have been running with require Java 17 and weekly for multiple months. Yep. So the baseline selection process should be pretty easy for us. Okay. So yes, and most of the, or most of the work, hopefully most of the work uh, that will allow us to switch to um, Spring Framework 6.x will be done by then. Don't, yeah, so thankfully, the way Buzzle's the way Buzzle has structured it, it doesn't it doesn't have to all be done by then. But there will be lots of the work done by then. Plugin updates will probably still happen over a course of months after that, um, as plugins adopt, make their switch to require Java seventeen. So we'll likely focus on the top two hundred or top two hundred and fifty plugin repositories. Mm. And and accept that plugins that are not in that top top set will move to Java seventeen when they choose to. Okay, I think I got it. But two weeks from now, I will have for forgotten everything. I will have that's to ask that's you why the notes in. the notes are here. That's exactly why we discuss this here. Very good. Thanks a lot. Uh, any other comments, Mark, regarding uh, that project? No, that's it. It's, it's, there's an awful lot of work. Oh, no, I take it back. Yes, I do have one more thing, Bruno. And that's a yeah. good thing for the group of the four of us who are here. Uh -huh. There are, there are already four tasks in JIRA 
that could be done by anyone that will help us be ready for that June 26, uh, or for the June 18th Java 17 transition and the June 26, um, or t yeah, June 18 and June 25, I guess. 26 is, is not seven days later, is it? Uh, no, no, I, right. June 26 is LTS baseline selection, right? But those no. four JIRA tasks are have been identified by Basel as failing tests due to uh, things that we need to understand better about Jetty 12. And, and they don't require him. Any one of us could do those things. And it would be a help to have multiple people assisting with this. So I, I can put the links to those yes, into, the, into the <laughs> notes later. later. Right. Thanks a lot, Mark. Got it. Uh, Kenneth, Kevin, anything you would like to add to the agenda? Something that I missed? Uh, no, I don't have anything. Well, okay. Well. Thanks for another. Thank you both. So it looks like we can wrap up the meeting. Thanks a lot for being there. The recording should be there from hmm, 24 to 48 hours. And until then, have fun with Jenkins and see you two weeks from now. Bye-bye. Thanks. <laughs>